on the behalf of the Next Gen Lake House team, we wish you a happy new year. And let's start with a recap of what's new on data engineering, governance, and platform updates for December 2024. First of all, Databricks has released a new privilege called Manage, and this one allows users to perform key actions on Unity catalog objects such as managing privileges, dropping the object, renaming the object, and transferring ownership. In case you have, for example, a meta store, a level storage for managed tables and volumes, and you want to enforce data storage isolation at the catalog or schema level, you can now do it without interrupting the workloads. And Unity Catalog also now allow to access and govern data that is registered in Hive Metastore, like, such as external Hive Metastore and AWS Glue. And I think this is super, super important for people who are currently now doing migrations or still have tables that they use in AWS Glue. For system tables, we have now a new table called Network Access Event. And this table logs an event whenever internet access is denied from your accounts. You can find it in a schema called Access. And for the people who are still using Oracle, you can now federate Oracle tables in with Lakehouse federations. And we have some updates in the compute. Uh, Single user has been renamed dedicated access, and now you can assign a group of people to the dedicated cluster. And this is, this is very interesting for ML engineers because now they can just use the ML runtime with those dedicated and having the access, granting the access to many, many people at the same time. For data engineer updates, you can now view streaming workloads metrics for your job runs and DLT pipeline, and you can find some interesting metrics like backlog seconds, byte records. So have a look at it. We have also now, if you're using DBR 16.1 or above, supports full for collations in Apache Spark and uh, Delta Lake. So basically, you can now assign a language aware case sensitive access uh, insensitive collations to a string columns and expressions. And for Delta Lake part, you can define those collations for columns whenever you create or alter a Delta table. And uh, if you know Vacuum, we have now introduced or a new mode called Light. And this one is, is super interesting to perform a light weighter, lighter weight a vacuum operation, specifically if you have large tables uh, that you vacuum a lot. And for the people who are using like uh, param parameters, I think this, this one is going to be very, very interesting because now the identifier close is supported with uh, the use uh, catalog statement. And you can also, of course, for those who want to do it, the comment on um, statement now supports uh, altering comments for views and table columns. And Databricks has also introduced three new SQL functions that you want to use. The first one is called day name. Basically, you just use this function with the date, and then it tells you whether it's Monday, to Tuesday, Thursday, and so on. The second one is called uniform, and it returns a random value with independent and identically distributed values within the specified range of numbers. And the last one, Rand str, which returns a random string of length alphanumeric characters. For the platform update, I think you're going to love this one. The personal access token validity has been reduced to two years, and you have now the possibility to use budget policies to model serving endpoints, which means you can now fix, um, or oh, for those for first or so, who doesn't know, who doesn't know what. Budget policies is so budget policies consist of sets of tags that are apl applied to a serverless compute activity incurred by a user assigned to these specific policies. Those tags are going to be logged into the billing records, allowing you to attribute serverless usage to a specific budget, which means now you can apply this for model serving endpoints and you can see how much does it cost or every, like every model serving, how much does it cost for, and you can assign those costs to a specific, for example, D DS1, data science two, data science team three, and so on. The other update is about like managing outbound network connections with serverless egress control. 
Basically, this restricts outbound access to a specified internet destination. And I think this one strengths your security posture by allowing you to manage outbound connections from your serverless workloads, reducing the risks of data exfiltration. And of course, there is one thing that is very, very interesting about groups. You know that you can like get groups using your identity provider. So now you can create external group, like, or not create, but external groups are explicitly labeled as external, which means they can no longer be updated from Databricks account console or workspace uh, settings by the page by default. If you want to update them or to update them, then you need to uh, disable the immutable external group access. And last but not least, I was kidding that the last one. The default format for new notebooks is now IPNB. In the past, it was the language that you were using, whether it's SQL, Python, R, or Scala. Now it's IPNB, but of course you can switch, still switch to the one you want. That was all, and see you very, very soon. Bye.